Sarah Obadwe here from Horse Racing Nation with another weekly episode of the Outrun the Odds video segment where I take a look at horses at prices that I think can outrun the odds, shaking things up in the exotics or possibly even winning at a price. And first, I just wanted to say thank you for liking this video, subscribing to the Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel, and turning those notifications on so that you don't miss out on any of our future handicapping content. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and is looking forward to another great weekend of racing. And I will start off with some Saturday plays at Aqueduct. And we're going to be on the turf in the grade two Red Smith Stakes, one of the last turf races that will be held in New York for the winter as we are closing things up with cold weather coming in on the turf courses. And I'm looking to the number eight horse Temple in here, who is eight to one on the morning line as a horse that I like over the favorite in Soldier Rising because they just think that Soldier Rising is pretty vulnerable in a spot like this. It's one of those horses that may not necessarily have that killer instinct to win when it comes down to it. And I do think this mile and three eighths distance might be best suited for Temple as he has done his best running at this distance, especially this year, because if you look at his figures on buyers, those are his better numbers. If we go back to his last win, which was on March 5th at Gulfstream Park, in the grade two McDermott Estates, he was the number eight horse in there. He was able to get the job done that day. And I do like that he is a horse that generally shows pretty tactical speed. He can sit a little bit closer early if he needs to, and he will probably need to in this spot. Or he can come from a little further back if pace scenario does dictate that as a necessity. If we go to another race at this distance, which was at Monmouth Park on July 23rd in the Grade 1 United Nations, he was able to run third that day at 12 to 1 after having a less than stellar break in there, bobbling a bit at the start and ending up in the show position behind At Homo and Epic Romance. If we go back to his last start at Keeneland, which was on October 14th, this was going a mile and a half, so perhaps a little farther than he truly appreciates in the grade three Sycamore. And he was also the number eight in there at a very generous 23 to one that day. Gave me a brief thrill as he was one that I used in that race, finishing second to Highland Chief, who then did go on to run in the Breeders' Cup. He just couldn't quite get the job done that day, but ran, ran very respectively and obviously outran his odds in there. So I'm looking to him in this spot, getting Javier Castellano aboard for the first time as one that could be a great alternative to the favorite and a horse that is generally consistent at this distance, whereas others may be a little bit more pace compromised or may not be in their best form right now. We'll switch gears over to Churchill Downs for the grade two goldenrod stakes for those fillies that are taking a look ahead to next year's Kentucky Oaks. We're looking at those two-year-old fillies that will be going a mile and a 16th in this spot. And there's actually two horses in here that I have an interest in. The three, American Rockette, who is 10 to 1 on the morning line, as well as the number seven horse, T-Max, who is 12 to 1 morning line as potential alternatives to your short priced favorite though I do think Hoosier Philly is a little bit more dangerous than Soldier Rising in the previous race these might be horses that you want to use underneath in an exacta or perhaps underneath somewhere else if you have another short priced horse that you're more of a fan of so these are ones that I would consider for filling out the exotics more so than a win bet but taking a look at American Rockette, this was a horse that I actually did pick for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, and she did end up scratching out of there reportedly due to a fever. I like that she's returning fairly quickly, though, seems to have recovered from that, and will be contesting this race, and that she is getting a couple of changes such as stretching out in distance further than the mile that she went last time out in the frisette, uh, running at a track other than one in New York, and also getting a rider change in Florent Giroux. This is, one is the half to Frank's Rockette, who is more of a successful sprinter. However, I do like that they are uh, seemingly determined to try her at these longer distances and see what she's capable of and possibly have the Kentucky Oaks on the brain going down the road into next year. This horse on debut was in an off the turf race and a little bit overlooked on the board, ended up going off at four to one. And the move that she made in that race to close from behind, taking kickback and, and drawing away pretty impressively in the end there was just very eye catching and visually impressive. And not only was it pleasing to the eye, but also earned a respectable 70 buyer for her debut. 
Next time out, she did step up in company in the grade one spin away at Saratoga, uh, going the seven furlong distance. And that was a race won by Leave No Trace and Wonder Wheel finished second in there. And just the break that she had in the beginning from post 10 is unlike anything that I've really seen in quite some time. Uh, thoughts of Classic Empire come to mind in a similar race a couple of years ago. But the way that she was able to just recover from that and ended up finishing fourth in that spot, you can't tell me that she wasn't arguably best in there and, and did the most uh, overcoming of obstacles. And that's not something a lot of other two-year-old fillies have had to do yet in their very short careers. Now, last time out, I didn't really have much of an excuse for her in the frisette as she finished sort of a dull fourth in there, but it's possible that she wasn't really a fan of the sloppy going, and I don't really know if she handled the track that well, so I'm willing to give that one a little bit of a pass, and I did like seeing that the spin away, seemingly a very key race for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies as Wonder Wheel won that race and Leave No Trace ended up finishing second at a bit of a price. So I'm a little bit more convinced of American Rockettes quality after seeing those two fillies end up coming back with such significantly improved performances in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Moving on to the number seven, T-Max. This one does have the home court advantage over American Rockette as she has been successful already at Churchill Downs. She did break her maiden at Ellis Park, however, and I did pick her going into her second start at Churchill Downs because I did feel as though she would be a little bit overlooked as that Ellis Park shipper with some more um, potentially intriguing pedigrees and flashier trainer statistics going into that um, allowance race that she ended up winning with a 70 buyer going the seven furlong distance. She was pretty convincing in that spot, which was enough for me to take her again in the rags to riches stakes where she finished second at seven to one behind Hoosier Philly, who is your big favorite in this race coming up. The track was sloppy that day for this mile and 1 16th distance, and she ended up finishing second, though a long way back second to Hoosier Philly. So I don't really know how she makes up the difference on this big favorite in here, but I will at least consider her as one that has run second to her before, has won at Churchill Downs, and does have experience going this distance while many others are stretching out to this distance for the first time on this surface. So I'm interested to see what we get from her and if she takes another step forward going into the Goldenrod Stakes. So for me this weekend, it is number eight, Temple, in the grade two, Red Smith at Aqueduct, and number three, American Rockette, and number seven, T-Max, in the grade two, Goldenrod at Churchill Downs. Good luck this weekend, and thanks for tuning in.